Hey guys, Hackersploit here, back again with another video. Welcome back to the Penetration Testing Bootcamp. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at firewall evasion with Nmap. Uh, we've already taken a look at how to perform all the you know various types of scans with Nmap. Uh, now it's time to take a look at how to uh, how to evade firewalls because we already know how to detect them you know using ACK probing. Uh, now. When we talk about firewall evasion with Nmap specifically, there's two ways of thinking of it. The first way is to, you know, is to work with techniques like spoofing, uh, using decoys, uh, changing the the minimum transmission unit, stuff like that, which is what we're going to be taking a look at in this video. And then we have the second technique, which really is not there specifically for evasion of firewalls and intrusion detection systems. And that is to, uh, and that is when we're going to be taking a look at scan performance and timing. So we'll be taking a look at stuff like timing templates in the next video that actually uh, are set up to allow you to slow down a scan so that, you know, your scan is not noisy because, you know, most of the time Nmap scans can be extremely noisy and when you're dealing with firewalls and intrusion detection systems you don't want to cause any alert right and uh, you know usually noisy scans are very 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 uh, uh, they're commonly known for that so in this video we'll be talking about techniques like using decoys uh, fragmenting packets which really doesn't work nowadays but i still have to cover it because it's very important and then uh, decoys all right so let's start off with decoys because they're one of my favorites so the concept of a decoy is fairly simple to understand. You essentially, what you're doing is you're making it look like this. You, your scan is coming from another IP address. And this can work on the internet, across the internet, or on a local area network, right? So uh, that just gives you an idea of, of how advantageous this can be. Because on a local area network, you can actually spoof an IP address that belongs to a, an administrator or a network administrator. And you can make it look like the scan is coming from that device. And I'll actually show you this with Wireshark. All right. So, you know, again, using a decoy with Nmap is fairly simple. Again, we say we want to run a default uh, scan here. Let's say we, we're going to be running a SYN scan. And um, we'll run a service version. Uh, so we'll say SV and a fast scan. So again, only 100 ports. I just want to keep it nice and simple. And then we use the minus D or the hyphen D option. And the D is uppercase to specify a decoy. Now, when specifying a decoy, you can specify any IP address you want, any IPv4 address you want, right? Or you can let Nmap do it for you by uh, specifying the RND option, which means random, and then specifying the amount of random IPs you want Nmap to actually use. And Nmap will generate them randomly. Now, if you're on a local area network, I recommend that you know the device that you actually want to use as your uh, to, to actually perform the, the 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 spoofing or the IP of the host that you actually want to use as your decoy. Now, on, the, on, on, on when performing a scan across the internet, again, I would recommend using the random option or if you have an IP address that, uh, again, you're using, if uh, you, let's say you, you found an IP address that is whitelisted on a website or a particular server, then you can actually do that. Uh, you can actually specify that IP. So I can type the IP here. So I can say 10.0.0.1. I can specify another decoy that we can use and Nmap will use them sequentially. And so I can say 10.0.0.2, you know, so on and so forth. And I can specify as many as I want. Uh, but in this case, let's just use the random option and I'll specify three random IPs. And the reason I'm doing this is to show you the pattern that will repeat itself every time we send a SYN packet. Because remember, we're performing a SYN scan. So that means we're going to be sending SYN scans or SYN packets and then waiting for the response. If we get an RST back, it means that particular port is open. All right. So I just want to I just want you to keep that in mind. Uh, the target is going to be nmap.scanme.org, right? So nmap.scanme.org is a website that has been set up by the Nmap project that allows you to perform scans on it, you know, for for for, for learning and education purposes. So uh, again, I don't need to open up the browser here. We'll just run the scan. We'll open up Wireshark and we'll start a capture. And uh, we'll run the scan. And we're just going to hit enter. And uh, immediately you can see we have all the SYN requests being sent and we'll just wait for the scan to complete and I'll just show you the pattern that repeats itself. So this scan is complete um, and uh, we'll stop the scan there and uh, we'll scroll all the way to the top here where we have our initial SYN requests being sent. Now, if you pay close attention, you can see that there are three IP addresses that are repeating themselves in a pattern. You have 171.124, and I'll just name the, the I'll just give you the two first uh, the first two placeholders. So 171.124, two 
18.62, 20.243, and then again it re it repeats itself. So 171.124, uh, 218.62, 20.243, 20 20 and so on and so forth. It continues, and you can now see that Nmap is using these three randomly generated decoy addresses to perform the scan, which is again extremely useful. So we have all the SYN requests being sent, and then we have our first RST, and that is on port 22, which in this case we know is correct, and that tells us that port 22 is open, so Nmap is doing its job correctly. So that is how to use uh, the decoy option. And as I said, you can specify any IP you want to use. So let's say we want to use 171.124. So let's do that right now. We can specify the random, uh, sorry, the decoy address as 171. Point, um, that is uh, 171.124.180, 124.180, and uh, the last uh, the last three are 173. So we'll say 173, right? And that is going to be our decoy address. So we'll start the scan again, and we'll start a new capture with Wireshark. So I'll just do that again. There we are. We're going to start the scan. And uh, we'll just wait for the scan to complete and then I'll show you the results just to show you that now we're not using three addresses. Nmap is going to use the decoy address that we have specified. All right, so the scan looks like it's taking quite a while. When we can actually just monitor that our own or ourselves here, you can see that the only IP address that is being used now is the decoy address that we specified. So 171.124.180.173, right? And there we are. In this case, it tells us that we have two ports open. So that means we should have two RSTs back and uh, we have one here. That's the first RST. That's port 80, I believe. Um, let's see. Do we have any other RSTs? Probably one up here. That's the SSH port. No, that's port 80. Sorry. And here we have port 22. So there we are. We get the responses. And that's how to use the decoy option. Uh, now let's talk about fra packet fragmentation. So packet fragmentation is the process of fragmenting a packet into the lowest unit that you can, which is about 8 bytes. And this is very useful because you're essentially breaking down a packet and its contents into smaller pieces and then uh, they, they usually get uh, rebuilt once they reach their target. So uh, anyone in the middle, any firewall or a filter or a proxy that is monitoring the packets will not be able to make up what, what, what these packets are. Now, of course, this, this works on very old hardware and intrusion detection systems and intrusion detection systems, pardon me. Uh, nowadays, you usually have uh, intrusion detection systems that can actually perform or rebuild packets because, you know, packets usually have sequence numbers that allow you to rebuild them, especially on the target side. So uh, this, again, is used to evade, you know, uh, usually quite old firewalls uh, and intrusion detection systems that are that are outdated or don't have, uh, you know, any advanced uh, functionality. So. Uh, we can actually do this uh, by, uh, we can again run the same scan here. But in this case, and again, we can use the, the, the decoy option. And in this case, if we want to fragment the packets, we can just say F. And this is a lowercase F. And as I said, it's going to fragment it into its lowest, uh, into the lowest, uh, into the lowest size, which is about eight bytes. Now, the thing about fragmentation is, uh, what we can do is we can just run this scan and then we'll just capture it and let's see if it works because there's usually an issue with uh, the new versions of Nmap. So we'll just stop that scan. We'll start the capture again. And I'm going to hit enter. And let's see if it actually fragments it into the into eight bytes. So if we click on a packet here and uh, we open up TCP, let's see if we can actually take a look at the size. So in this case, it's about four uh, bytes, which again, that means we need to send the eth uh, we need to send ethernet here so uh, we say send eth uh, so we say send eth and that should uh, increase it so we say we'll stop that and we'll start the capture again so now the packet size the you know the frag it should there we are you can actually see it tells us that it's fragmented now uh, if we click on the data you can see it tells us it's eight bytes and that means that the um, uh, that means that the packet has been fragmented now if you, you, you should really get accustomed to Wireshark because Wireshark gives you very, very important information. So uh, you can see that if we analyze one of these fragmented packets, we get information like the source IP, which we have used, uh, we have used the, the, the decoy to send. Um, so we can see that um, it's a fragmented uh, packet and um, you can see it tells us right over here in brackets that it's going to be reassembled uh, when, when it reaches its destination. So I just wanted to demonstrate that. And that's how to perform fragmentation 
it's uh, again you can test it out on targets based on you know whether or not you can actually get access to them or, or whether or not your scans are being blocked but again it's a very very useful technique uh, now when you talk about uh, transmission units and packet size uh, we need to talk about the minimum transmission unit uh, option which again is uh, is just like the fragment option however in this case you can specify your own transmission unit right so you're not really fragmenting it to about eight bytes you're now dealing with you you again you're dealing with factors of eight so you can say eight bytes uh, 16 24 32 etc so let me demonstrate this to you we can run the same scan and um, we will say we want to specify the MTU here. And the MTU is going to be, we can say, let's say 16, right? So we have 8, um, 16, 24, etc. And we'll just start the capture one more time. And I'll just show you that right now. So the scan begins. We have all our SYN packets being sent. Um, one second, if we go to the bottom here uh we will actually specify what, what did we specify exactly that was uh 16 right all right so let me just use the send ethernet option here uh send eth and we'll just hit enter and we'll stop that let me just capture that one more time uh yeah there we are so we get the fragmented ip apologies for that um you know the new version of nmap usually has this issue especially when dealing with uh with these types of targets uh, so if you click on one, you can see that the length is now set to 16 bytes. Uh, so the data is set to 16 bytes and again is re reassembled when it reaches its target. Now, as I said, many intrusion detection systems nowadays are actually able to, to actually reassemble the packets. And uh, yeah, we can specify another MTU here. Um, let's see, we can perform, we can send set the MTU to something like 32. I just want to demonstrate this. Um, so I'll stop the capture there. And uh, I'll just start a new one. Uh, it doesn't look like the packets are being fragmented anymore. That means we have 32, right? So, yeah, that's perfectly fine. Uh, if we change this back to 8, I just want to test and see whether that works. So we send the minimum transmission unit to 8. Uh, or actually to something like 24. We can actually just hit enter. Did we actually run 24 before? Let's try 24. And we'll go all the way to the bottom here. Let's see if we have any fragmented packets. It looks like it's sending them here. We'll actually just try and capture that again. Um, so we'll run that one more time. And I'll start a new capture here. And we'll run the scan there one more time. There we are. Um, looks like the length is now set appropriately. Right, so if we... Uh, again, based on the type of uh, uh, the size, you can see the header length is 24. Uh, based on the size, uh, again, the packet will either be looked as uh, fragmented or uh, if we specify something like 16 again, you can actually see that it will be in now in a fragmented state. So we say 16. Um, so we'll start that again. Uh, hit enter you'll now see that they'll now be fragmented based on the the, the length that you specify you know, 8 16 24 32 etc all right so now that we've talked about mtu uh, we've talked about decoy and uh, fragmentation uh, we are going to now in the next video start taking a look at uh, scan performance and timing which is very very important so that's going to be it for this video guys uh, let me know if you have any questions or suggestions and i'll be seeing you in the next video peace